Hey guys, so this is my wife's vintage Pfaff 138-6. It's an older uh, straight and zigzag stitch sewing, industrial sewing machine with a uh, four millimeter stitch width. Now, I actually have the same machine that I use personally, except I have a more, uh, a little bit newer version that has a six millimeter stitch width. Uh, in my opinion, these are awesome, awesome, awesome uh, zigzag uh, machines. But I thought I'd do a video today and show you guys um, the clutch motor assembly on this um, on this setup because I think it'll really help um, people understand how the clutch motor works and, and um, maybe some of the changes that they can make to their current setup to have it perform a little bit better for them. And the clutch assembly on this setup is external so you can actually see what's going on here really well. So uh, let's go to the back of the machine. I'll show you. I love these old vintage fox. You see with like the cast iron. Um, spool stand and stuff so let me drop you down here so here it is here's the uh, clutch motor assembly now I've used modern clutch motors vintage clutch motors like this um, modern servo motors like what's over there on, on that machine uh, and they all the the clutch motors operate basically both this and the modern ones operate in the same way so on this particular setup, this is uh, this assembly here, which is the clutch assembly, is made by a company called Atlas. Um, I still think you can find these around, floating around on eBay and stuff. Um, they're really cool. So th the motor is actually just a standard universal motor. This is something that you would find on like a vin on like a vintage or modern woodworking tool. This is just a standard motor assembly. Nothing special about it. You can use this on basically anything. It's driven by a motor. Uh, and what they did was they adapted this uh, standard motor to be used with the sewing machine via this clutch assembly here. So the motor here, if you look, is just kind of hanging off this bracket and then attached to the end of the, the spindle here is this big disc, steel disc. It's got a decent amount of mass to it, um, but mounted in between, mounted on the outside of that disc is a, a cork uh, it's not solid cork all the way through, it's just a ring of cork. Um, maybe about a half inch, maybe even less, um, just around the perimeter of this disc. And what, what basically happens is, on this clutch assembly, when you depress, when you press down on the brake, on the foot pedal, this, so you pull the, the foot, push the foot pedal down, and it pivots here, and it pushes this disc, which is right now, it's just it's not connected to anything um, except for the drive belt and the leather drive belt. And I'll show you why they use leather in a second. But basically, as you press this down, this disc will catch on the cork pad here. That's this is constantly spinning. So you turn the motor on, it's just always going to be humming. And that's the same thing you hear on a modern clutch motor, constantly spinning. So this is constantly spinning. You depress on the pedal and it moves and it will catch on this cork and this is how you can you feather it so the harder you push the more contact and friction occurs between the two surfaces and the, the faster the, this will spin until eventually this disc is up to speed and matched matching this disc spinning this this motor is spinning at 17 25 rpm now <clears throat> you'll see two pulleys here you have a pull this is your drive pulley but this is also your brake pulley. So there's actually a little piece, let me take it out of the tripod, there's actually a little piece of um, leather down here that you can actually change out. This, there's leather in here, it loops around over the top of this. And so when you go and you're, you're sewing and you're depressing the pedal and you want to hit the brake, basically when you let go, this arm comes up and pushes against this, this pulley, the brake pulley and the brake pulley will stop the entire motion. So that's how the brake works on that. So it's a base, it's really a simple mechanism. You, you need to line up these two discs so that they're both matched. Basically you want the two um, spindles to be perfectly in line with each other. And the way that you do that is via um, this here. So it's just a single bolt. You raise and lower it um, to make sure that the two points are at the same height and then you need to eye down the center just looking through a gap and seeing where the light's coming through and you, you depress this and you want to make sure that this disc contacts this disc equally 
at the same time in all locations. You don't want the bottom to catch and then the top. So you want it to, to spin, you want it to be tilted correctly. And that's what these two bolts are for. So you basically can adjust these and it will change the, the angle of, of this disc. Uh, and then there are other things too. This outside bolt, you can loosen it and tighten it and that will give you a gap here depending on, which will shorten the travel. Uh, if you push it in that you have to push before this engages this spring is kind of your is your return spring um, and then on a modern clutch motor all of this is basically internal so you still have a brake similar to this you still have a clutch you still have this disc with the cork so you know i haven't had to replace or pull apart any modern clutch motors to to really see what's going on in there on some that i felt weren't operating so well but you can imagine with time and heat that this cork can glaze over and uh, it doesn't catch as effectively um, so you lose some of the sensitivity and feel that you would have in this clutch setup so I'm going to show you what it looks like actually under power and, and sewing so you can see what it sounds like on these old vintage ones but also um, the kind of control that you can get from one of these old clutch motors because I actually really like this motor um, my wife doesn't, she doesn't like it so much, only because it's, it's a little bit loud. Um, so let me position, it's a little bit loud, especially compared, she, you know, she's used to sewing on, on a servo motor too, so it's a little bit different. But let me see if I turn the light on, if that helps. Okay. So here, I'm going to click it on, and then here's the assembly here, so this is the power and I haven't replaced this bulb yet, but there's actually a bulb right here. It's a red bulb that um, that when the machine's on, this bulb will glow red. So let me, uh, so you know that the machine's on. So there you go, you can hear the motor. Very subtle hum in the background. Um, you can drive the needle down. So let me just uh, sew a stitch so you can hear what it sounds like. So, so you can hear it as it starts to engage. So there it's barely touching. And then it starts to engage. And you can see how much slow speed control I have on this thing. But if I want to, I'm gonna fold this over so it's a little bit thick. This is some pretty thick thread and uh, so anyway, so. And then you hear the break. Uh, I could probably change out that piece of leather. It's a little bit old, but you can see the slow speed control, so. Right, really slow speeds. Um, you guys zigzag. So, let me see if I can give you a view underneath. Uh, so, see the uh, see the gap um, between the two discs, and then you see how it closes in, starts to catch, and then it goes. So that's how it works. Now, in my opinion, this is just as much control as you would get with the servo motor, but it is going to be louder for sure. And it, the, it's going to take some finicky setup. So if it's not set up right for you when you first get it, you'll have to do a little bit of tuning, but, but you're talking a third of horsepower, super controllable. This is not like... You know, it, it, it just doesn't take off on you like some of the other clutch motors that I've tried, but... So, let me go slow again. So, there it is. That's, uh, that's a vintage clutch motor on a FOF uh, 138. So, um, if you happen to run across one of these, I would say give it an opportunity, you know. Um, oh, I didn't mention this, and I, this is a big point here, and that is the machine has to use leather belts, and the reason is is there's no way 
here you can see the disc spinning. Let me turn it off. Okay. There's no way to tension this unit because this is fixed. The motor location is fixed. There's no way, it doesn't hinge or anything like on a modern clutch motor. Um, so this is a fixed distance. The, what you can change is the belt, the belt length. So that's the thing about this is you cannot use a modern uh, 3L uh, belt. I mean, you could, but the problem is also uh, putting it on and removing it because you would have to basically move this disc far enough away um, f from the from the actual friction disc to be able to slip the belt on, and you know you don't have a lot of room here, so you'd have to you'd have to play with that to get it to go. Uh, I don't I don't really even know if it's possible, but um, so you have to use a leather belt. This is a it's larger than your standard treadle. I think it's a five sixteenths, and I think a standard treadle leather belt that you would see is three sixteenths. So you have to go with a thicker sized belt, and there is. Um, there's a link in it. You have to use special pliers. Well, not necessarily special pliers, but you do have to use pliers because this is held together with a little metal pin that's folded over like that. So I had to retension this when I got it. Not a big deal, but just be aware of that fact. So you're going to have to use original leather belt. But this is awesome. You know, it's this thing is made in uh, Newark, New Jersey. It's Atlas Clutch Motor. Um, and a modern clutch motor operates in the same exact way. So it's just some of the modern improvements are this is all integrated inside the motor housing. You are able to adjust the belt tension because it, it pivots basically. Um, and you, you have one pulley that you can change out. You can't change the pulley size out on this. It's a fixed size. So there you go. So hopefully that, that uh, helps you guys understand and maybe better visualize what's happening internally on a modern clutch motor and just know about this cork disc that's in there so if you're having troubles you might want to consider maybe replacing those discs which you can find replacements and if you happen to run across one of these and you don't mind tinkering a little bit I think this setup is awesome I really like it so all right hope that helped thanks guys